In this video, we will be discussing an overview of control systems. A control system consists of three basic components. Firstly, the objectives of the control are the desired response, also known as the input. Secondly, the control system components, which consist of subsystems and processes called plans. And lastly, the actual response or results referred to as outputs. Hence, a control system can be defined as subsystems and processes which are assembled for the purpose of obtaining a desired output with desired performance given by a specified input. The desired performance of a control system is determined by the transient response and steady state response. These are the two major measures of performance in a control system. The transient response refers to how long a system takes to achieve its desired output while the steady state response refers to the accuracy of the system's output. We can apply these control system specifications to the operation of an elevator. The figure below demonstrates the time response for the operation of an elevator. Suppose you enter the elevator on the ground floor of a building and you desire to exit the elevator on the fourth floor. The push of the fourth floor button, which is the input command, represents the desired output which is to exit the elevator on the fourth floor. The elevator will rise from the ground floor to the fourth floor with a certain speed and floor leveling accuracy. So if the elevator takes a long time to reach the fourth floor, this indicates that the transient response of the elevator is slow, which might cause the passengers to become impatient. If the transient response is fast, then the passenger's comfort would be sacrificed. Once the elevator comes to a stop or reaches a steady state, if the elevator is not properly leveled to the fourth floor, this will result in a steady state error, which means that the output or actual response is not achieved. There are two types of control system configurations, open loop control systems, which are non-feedback control systems, and closed loop control systems, which are feedback control systems. These two configurations can be viewed as the internal architecture of a simplified control system diagram. A typical open loops control system will consist of an input signal or reference command which is sent to a transducer and is then applied to the controller. Other signals such as disturbances are added to the controller by a summing junction or actuator. The output of the summing junction or actuating signal controls the plant or process such that the output or the control variable will perform according to the prescribed standards. In open loop systems, disturbances are unwanted signals that corrupt the input or output of a plant or process. And in this configuration, open loop systems do not correct for disturbances and are simply commanded by the input. Two examples of open loop systems are toasters and washing machines. In a typical closed loop system, the input command or reference is sent through a transducer, which is sent to the controller. The controller drives the process or plan to generate an output or control variable. The output signal is measured via a sensor or output transducer through a feedback path and subtracted from the input via a sum injunction. The feedback path is a path through which a signal flows back to a previous signal in the forward path through an output transducer in order to be added or subtracted. The result is an actuating signal or error which is sent to a controller which drives the process producing the desired output response. As opposed to the open loop system, the closed loop system compensates for disturbances added to the controller by comparing the measured output feedback signal to the input signal at the summing junction. If a difference exists between the two responses, the system drives the plan to correct for the disturbance. Conversely, if no difference exists, then the system does not drive the plan since the plan's response is already the desired response. The main advantage of closed loop systems are greater accuracy, less sensitivity to disturbances, noise, and changes in the environment. Two examples of closed loop systems are elevators and cruise control systems in cars. In conclusion, we discussed an overview of control systems, highlighting the basic features of a control system control system performance specifications, and types of control system configurations. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.